Good morning, this is Miss Billerbeck, and we're going to talk about section 2.2, point slope form. So the slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the rise over the run. Okay, and that's for point x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now, to derive the point-slope form, we need to understand the slope formula. So, um, let's say we didn't know point two. So, let's say we have the slope is y minus y1 over x minus x1. So, in order to simplify this in terms of the y values, what we would do is just multiply this side by the denominator and this side by the denominator. And what that does is it gets rid of the denominator. So then we have y minus y1. So if we rearrange this using the commutative property, we have m times x minus x1 equals y minus y1, and then to use the reflexive property, we just have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And there we have the point-slope form. Okay. Now, we can find the slope-intercept form from the point-slope form. So, first let's start with the slope-intercept form. So, we know what we're trying to accomplish here. So, the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And b, that is your y-intercept. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, the y-intercept coordinate is 0, b. So x equals 0 at the y-intercept. So if we chose just a random point, uh, let's choose 3, 1 for our x1, y1. Okay, so now let's put it into the point slope formula. And we have y minus, and y1 is 1, equals m times x minus x, um, the x1, which is 3. But we know that x is 0 for the y-intercept, and that's what we're looking for. So we add 1 to both sides, and we get y equals negative 3m plus 1. But we still don't know what, what m is, but we do. We know that m is um, y, which is we have, we can use this one as x2 and x y2. So we have b minus 1 over 0 minus 3. Okay, so that's going to be our slope. So now let's put that in there. So we have negative 3 times, and then this is going to be b minus 1 over negative 3. So we have b minus 1 over negative 3 plus 1. We see the negative 3's cancel. We get y equals b minus 1 plus 1. Well, that's just b. So it doesn't matter what point we put in there. Um, when we find the y-intercept, um, 
x will be 0, and we're given a point there. So y will end up being b um, with this formula when we set it to the slope-intercept form. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at something that's less theoretical. Okay, so we want to write an equation of the line that passes through this, these two points. So first, let's find the slope. Okay, so let's label x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have 3 minus a negative 1 over negative 3 minus 2. You may wonder why I harp on, on adding and subtracting integers so much. And it's because this slope formula, you really have to master your integer addition. Okay, so this becomes a, acts like a plus sign. So we have a 4, and then that's a negative 5. Now, we don't write the negative in the denominator. We write it in line with the denominator. So this becomes negative four-fifths like this. You can sometimes get by with a negative up in the numerator, but it is most proper in line with the fraction bar. So now let's write the point slope formula out. We can pick point one. So we have minus negative one equals negative four-fifths times x minus, and then 2. Okay, so we have y plus 1 equals negative 4 fifths x. Now, if we um, distribute this to both of these, that becomes a negative times a negative is a positive, so please do not forget to distribute the negative. So 4 times 2 is 8 this. So now let's subtract 1 from both sides. And let's make this 1 5 over 5 over here. So we get y equals negative 4 fifths x. And we have plus 8 over 5 minus 5 over 5. So our final slope-intercept form is negative 4 fifths x, and then that becomes plus 3 fifths. So this is slope-intercept form. And so we got the slope-intercept form from this form. Now, if we were to take this form and make get rid of this and say it's y plus 1 equals, make that a better equal sign, equals negative 4 is x minus 2. This is the point slope form of this equation. Both equations are for the same line. Okay, so if we said we had a point at, let's say our our another point at, um, let's go with uh, five. At x is five. Let's see what y is. Let's not even say what y is right now. Let's just say it. Let's test it for x equals 5. Okay, so when x is 5, this becomes negative 5 minus, actually, let's not do 5. Let's do x is 7. So 7 minus 2 is 5. So then I have a 5 on top, 5 below, so this becomes negative 4. So for this to be y plus 1 to equal negative 4, that would have to be a negative 5. 
So y would be negative 5. Now let's see if that's true for here. So down here, if x is 7, that's negative 28 up here, plus 3 gives me negative 25 over 5, which is negative 5. So that does work. So for both of these equations, this point, 7, negative 5, is still on their line. We can also check with this point here, negative 3, 3, but the reason why I did not check with that point, even though it actually will work, so let's do that. So negative 3 minus 3 is negative 5. So that makes that a positive number because I have a negative times a negative is a positive. And then a 5 on top and a 5 below. So you have 4. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. So that works too. Let's try that with this one. So this one, we have negative 3. So negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12 over 5. Plus 3 over 5 is 15 over 5, which is 3. So that works too. So there you go. So you could use two different points. Okay, so you can usually use this point um, since I gave it to you. But I was showing you how to make 5, so you can get rid of those 5s in the denominator. Okay, so let's sketch the graph of this. Okay, so first we mark our graph x, our y and x on the grid, the axes. Y is always the vertical, dependent axis. X is always the horizontal, independent axis. Okay, so we want to graph this. So, um, at this point, we could say, oh, we have one point. y minus negative 2 equals 1 half x minus 3. So that means we have the slope is 1 half, because they gave it to us here. And we have a point, and the x is 3, and the y is negative 2. So if we start with this is 2, 4 is right there, 6, and then 8, and 10. And we have two, negative 2, uh, negative 4, negative 6, and 2, 4, 6, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6. Okay. So we want to go to, uh, we have 3, which is right here, and negative 2. So we're at 3, negative 2 is our first point. And we have a slope. It's a rise of 1 and run of 2. So we have a second one. Rise of 1, run of 2. Okay, so what that says here is that 7, 0 works. So 7 minus 3 is 4. Half of 4 is 2, so 0 plus 2 is, um, it works. Okay, so that point definitely is there. So we can graph this one here with that slope. Okay, so we have one line here. So now let's take this one apart. So we have y minus 1 equals 3, but this is x minus a negative 2, because remember it's x minus x1. Okay, so that gives me a slope of 3 and a point of negative 2, 1. Okay, so if we start at negative 2, 1 right here. We have a slope of 3, so we rise 1, 2, 3, run 1. So let me move that over. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. So that means we have a y-intercept for this one at um, 7, 0. Okay, so when x is 0, y should be 7. 
So two, three times two is six, seven minus one is six. So that is true. So our second equation looks like this. Okay, so, um, and you can, you can always remember to do your little arrows because they do go on forever. So, there we have it. The two equations graphed. Okay, so this one actually has a y-intercept about three and a half. Okay, oh, and these are called x-intercepts. So, when they hit the x-axis, they intercept the x-axis. So we had an x-intercept at 7, 0 here, and a y-intercept at 0, 7. So this is a y-intercept and an x-intercept. Okay, this had a negative x-intercept, which is kind of hard to tell what it is. It's somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3. So let's look at the last problem. Okay, so if the budget for a wedding banquet is $1,200, okay, so we have a wedding banquet, $1,200, um, uh, can 75 people attend? So the banquet hall says that it's for 250 people, it costs $3,150. For 100 people, it costs $1,350. Okay, so with that in mind, let's find the slope. So we have the slope equals... 3150 minus 1350 over 250 minus 100. Okay, so that gives us a slope of, um, let's see, that one is 18, let's see, 1800 over 150. Okay, so that gives me a slope of 12. Okay, so, um, yes. Okay, so now the most important form for this is we have points and we have a slope. So um, now we can use point slope because we don't have a y-intercept. The slope-intercept form isn't as useful. So let's go and look at what this point slope form would look like. So we have y minus, now we have to be super careful because this is the y, 1350. Okay, and we need to know if we have enough for 75 people. Okay, so then we have 12 times, and it'd be y, but our y, I mean, sorry, this next one is an x. Our x is 75, which is right here. This is what we're trying to find. So let's put 75 and then minus the 100. So we're going to put that in there and see how much it's going to cost to rent this banquet hall um, for 75 people. So we have y minus, um, well, actually, let's just go ahead and add that 1,300 to the other side, 1,350. Okay, so we've got that. So now let's move over here where we have a little room. So y equals, and then 12 times 75, so that'd be uh, 2 times 75 is 150, and 6 times 150, that'd be uh, 900. 
So I use that nine. Well, first let's do 12 times, let's do 12 times negative 25, and then that's plus 1350. Okay, that makes it a little easier. Okay, so that gives me y equals, and then this, 12 times 25. So think when you have 25, think of dollars. So there's four quarters in a dollar. So that's negative 300 plus um, 1350. So, hey, look at that, 1050. So it's only for 75, you're at 1050. So that's right about here. So that point's going to be 75, 10, 50. So what that means is that you can have wedding there. Okay. So for 75 people, it's 1,050 people or $1,050. Okay. So what's the slope intercept form of this equation? So um, that means we have to find out where it hits. So what we're going to do when we do a slope intercept is we have y minus 1350 equals 12 times 0, because x is 0 there, minus 100. So we add the 1350 to both sides. And what that gives you is y equals, and that's just negative 1,200 plus 1,350, which ends up being um, 150. So your y-intercept, where it's finally going to hit, is right about here at 150. So that's $150 for zero people. So you don't even have to have a guess just you. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. So just to breathe the air, it's 150 without guess. <laughs> so that is your y-intercept. Okay, so once we find the y-intercept, we can do the whole equation now. So the slope form is y equals, our slope was 12x, and then plus 150. So that's why we needed that. So this one is the slope intercept form. So now we can put in whatever guess we want in here and it should work. So if we tested it out with, um, well, we use this point, we could test it out with this point. So we have y equals 12 times 250 plus 150 should equal that 3150. So we have y equals, okay, so this one is going to be 4,000, or wait, 3,000, because it's $3, and then plus 150. So we did do it right. So y equals 3150, check. Okay, so this is your y-intercept form, and then we put together the slope-intercept form to use it because we did not have the intercept in the beginning. So sometimes using point-slope is a, is a much better tool than um, the slope-intercept form. All right, that's it for this lesson. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.